masking fluid techniques. In this video, I'm going to show you some brand new tips and tricks for using masking fluid. Welcome back to my channel. If we haven't met before, my name is Michelle. On this channel, you'll find all things watercolour and a little bit of mixed media too. So please do consider subscribing. I make one free video a week for you on YouTube on a Thursday with extra content for my Patreon subscribers on a Saturday. So if you subscribe and click the bell icon, you can get notified every time I have a video for you. Now it can sometimes seem that masking fluid is rather boring. There seem to be a limited amount of ways that you can apply it to your paper. You know, there are various tools you can use, but at the end of the day, what are you left with? You draw or paint it onto your paper, or perhaps you splatter it with maybe a toothbrush. So this week I was thinking, surely there must be more ways that you can apply masking fluid. Now it's not that well known, but as well as being a watercolorist, I've worked in lots of different mediums. And one of those is traditional printmaking, things like lino printing and mono printing. Now masking areas out is a technique that's used all the time in traditional printmaking. So it's used by um, using tape, just by covering certain areas so that when you print onto the block, the ink is blocked from certain areas. Um, chemicals are used to mask certain areas out. Cutting is used. So it's all about masking out areas. So I wondered this week, could I not apply some of the techniques I learned in printmaking, particularly mono printing where things leave an impression onto masking fluid. So that's what I did in my latest painting and I'm going to share the results with you today. So I'm going to show you the painting that I did. I'm also going to give you 10 new ways of applying masking fluid to your paper. You're going to be absolutely stunned by the interesting results you can get. So in a minute I'm going to show you 10 new and interesting ways to apply masking fluid but let me just show you quickly first the painting that I just finished because you can see some of these methods here and see how beautiful they look. So I was painting tulips and I had three main tulips in the foreground and then I put my background colours in wet into wet to give an impression of soft tulips and I let the painting dry. Now after that I applied my masking tape technique. Now I have got a video on the masking tape technique so um, I'll link to that above and that's what you can see in the lower part of the painting. But at the top of the painting I wanted to try out some of these new masking fluid techniques and whilst I was actually putting them on my painting I was also trying them out on loads and loads of scraps of paper so I discovered loads of new ways of applying masking fluid which is what I'm sharing with you today. Now I think you'll agree how unusual they look and they gave me that printmaking look that I was looking for. I worked them on top of dry paint but you can work them on white paper as well and I even worked on top of that with extra paint once they were dry. So let me show you now some of the techniques that I discovered, some of the new ways that you can use masking fluid in your own work. So just before we start let me caution you about the problems you can get into and the mess that you can make with masking fluid. You can get into a terrible mess with masking fluid, my students do it all the time. It can ruin your paintings, it can damage and tear your paper. If you're at all worried about it please do watch the video I'm going to link to above because it'll give you some of the, uh, the mistakes that I've seen um, people making over and over again with masking fluid and I'm going to give you two pieces of advice in um, in respect of today's video. The first one is to try everything out on a scrap of paper first because masking fluid is hugely variable. It varies between brands and the way it um, applies and lifts off of paper varies between brands of paper and also things like um, heat and humidity as well. Things that I can't tell that you are going to encounter just um, from this side of the camera screen. So I want you to try everything out before you apply it so that you don't get into trouble with it. The other rule is everything must be dry. It must be dry, you must put it onto dry paper and it must come off of dry paper. So that includes if you've got a pre-painted surface and you're putting your masking fluid on top, it must be dry. The paint must be dry and I mean bone dry. I don't just mean might be dry, hopefully it's dry, bone dry. And then put it on dry paper take it off when the paint is completely dry as well. So if you follow those two rules, so if you only apply it and take it off of dry paper and you try it out on a scrap before using it on your paintings, you should be fine. But do watch that video that I recommended as well because it'll really help to get you out of any trouble. And now I'm going to show you 10 really exciting new ways of applying your masking fluid. So for masking fluid trick number one, this is something I've used loads of times in printmaking. It's a really lovely effect. I used it in my tulips painting and it's netting. 
So I've got paper samples today. I've taped the sample down because I don't want it to move. I have to film on a slight, uh, a slight slope so that the camera picks up everything properly. But generally speaking, I'd be working on a painting which would be, um, which would be stretch paper, so it wouldn't move anywhere. But it's really important when you're impressing things that uh, that that nothing can move around. This is something that's done in printmaking: is things are taped down so that they can't move. I've got some masking fluid. Now I've got a couple here. This one, um, SAA Blue Mask. I've always used this one. It's pretty good. Um, I fancied trying a new brand, so I bought this one. And I'm in two minds about it because although it came off the paper lovely, um, it performed very well, it seems a very good quality, it did stain my paper blue, which I was very unimpressed with. I'm going to use it today because we're only doing experimental stuff, just something to be careful of. I couldn't choose the white one because you wouldn't be able to see it very easily on camera, so I am using this blue one and there may be some staining. So I've also got a selection of little pots and things that I can pour it into. I've also got a sheet of um, glass over to one side that I can use as a working surface. Something that's used quite often in printmaking is surfaces of glass because they clean very easily. So here's my um, here's my liquid rubber, my masking fluid. And the first thing we're going to do is the netting technique. So this is some net that I was actually round a couple of um, very small lemons. Actually, I'm just going to cut that over to one side because they drop bits everywhere. Um, and this particular type of netting I have found to be the best when I was printmaking as well because it's got a really interesting shape to it. It looks very much like fishing net. Um, it's also quite soft so it stays where you put it where some of the nets can be really really springy and it can be extremely hard to get them to lay flat. Now with using masking fluid we're going to have to press it on and take it off really quickly because masking fluid dries so fast. So I'm going to cut a piece to shape, get rid of all those other little bits in a second and then I'm going to show you how it's done. I've got my netting and I've got a piece of paper to press with and I'm just going to dip in. It's really important that you don't get too much on because what happens then is it just spreads over the whole area and as you press you don't get any gaps left. You also want to be careful that you're not making sort of bubbles with it like that you can blow to get rid of those but generally speaking I'm just going to dip in so that it's well coated but it's not dripping or saturated because then you'll find that you don't get a very good result. Be aware that any of these techniques you are going to get variable results so don't be too, um, don't be too worried about getting precision so I'm just going to press on gently now. You have to be quick because we need to lift up before the masking fluid dries otherwise we'll pull it off the paper. And there we are, there's our masking fluid. Now I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to paint on it. So the paints I'm using today are by Jackman's Art Materials who are a British company making handmade paints. And um, I've got some samples here and also some larger tubes. I'm gonna use these paints today so you can have a look at them. This one is chrome oxide green and these chromium oxides, they tend to be very, very natural green. So we're gonna apply some of this and then we're going to contrast it with something brighter. So I'm going to put some of this in places. Now the best thing about all of these um, texture effects that I've made today is that they really look good if you do some wet into wet painting. So rather than just applying one colour, applying multiple colours. And of course, as I said at the beginning, you do not have to do this onto white paper. You can do it onto a previously painted area. Because we're working in watercolour, you would need to put a light colour on first and then go darker on top. So here I have some ocean blue shimmer and this is one of their shimmer paints. So it's got little sparkly bits in and I'm going to apply that and just let it bleed into the green in places. I'm using blues and greens because I think there's a real sort of undersea feeling to this netting. It always does remind me of fishing nets. Look at these beautiful colours, how they bleed together. Of course you can, if you want to as well, add some clean water in places. And in my tulips painting, what I did was actually, after I'd taken this layer off, I then went in with a little brush and highlighted. I painted in some of those little gaps as well. So there are so many options with these techniques. So I'm going to let this dry now before I remove the, uh, the masking fluid so you can see how it looks. So to remove your masking fluid, you simply rub it off with your fingers or you can use an eraser if you've got a large amount to, uh, to take off. I must not call it a rubber anymore. I've been told by my American friends we tend to call them rubbers in England, but we know what that means in America. 
Okay, so I'm, I've got a, a love-hate relationship going on with this schminky masking fluid because on the one hand it came off much better than my usual one, it came off the paper much easier, but it has in some, not on this case, but in some of the samples it stained my paper, which this one does not do. So the search for the perfect masking fluid goes on. I suspect I might try this one in white. It's just that on the camera you won't be able to see it, so um, we'll put up with any staining today. I'm going to hold this closer to the camera. I hope you can see. I don't know if you can see. It's very hard. Until I get the video edit, I can't see if you can see the shimmer in those colours, but they're absolutely beautiful. So don't forget to pop into the... Uh, into the video description and get your 10% off if you'd like to try those shimmer paints. There's also lots of other stuff in the video description. There's some free downloadable PDFs. You can also find my Facebook group in there too if you'd like to join that and show me your own paintings. So for my second masking fluid trick we're going to do some splattering but not just any old splattering. We're going to mask out some areas first and splatter over the top. So I don't know if you can see, but I've masked out an area here in the shape of a leaf. I've actually put this piece of paper onto a piece of glass with safety edges now um, because I don't want splatters all over my um, my wooden drawing board. So I'm just protecting it with a bit of glass. But if you're working on a larger board, that won't be a problem. I've got a toothbrush here and I've got some of the masking fluid. I've also got a jar of water and the second I finish splattering I'm going to dump this in the water jar to get some of the masking fluid off. However, masking fluid never comes off of brushes completely so you want to be aware that um, you need to be using old stuff because they just, they just don't come clean half the time. So I'm going to just dip in. Now when you're doing any kind of splattering, providing you pull your thumb forwards and point downwards the splatter will go forwards. Now, because I've got a mask here, I need to put enough on so that the edge shows. So I'm gonna do really quite a lot of splattering here. And don't forget that any of these techniques I'm showing you can be done onto dry paint. They don't have to be done on white paper at all. Certain types of masking fluid will occasionally lift some of the, uh, some of the color out, but you'll just have to, um, have to experiment with that. So like I said, because I want this mask to show when it comes off, I'm really going to put plenty on there. I've used masking tape here. Um, colour does tend to seep under the edges of masking tape. I also stuck it on my clothes a little bit first so that it, um, it wouldn't be over sticky and tear the paper when it came off. If you want something that gives an exact precise edge, then scotch tape is a good one or various other types of painting tape can work. So I've put loads of splatter on there, I'm going to clean that brush immediately and now I'm going to let it dry. So it's going to seem to you as if I'm painting these immediately but do remember that I'm letting them dry in between filming so although it seems like I've just gone straight in they do need to be bone dry before you work into them. So this is the one where I had some masking tape. You may not be able to see the masking tape very easily but it'll soon become clear once we, uh, once we take off the, uh, the tape and the masking fluid. So what I've got here is the pearlescent bronze shimmer. So I'm going to apply this in places and this is one of their um, sparkly shimmer paints. And then I'm going to use some of the burnt sienna. They have their tubes have these really good little flip caps so that they don't get all gunked up. And look at those lovely bright pigments. And the reason I'm using these colours is because we have a leaf shape here so I think it's really going to look nice as if it were sort of on the forest floor and although it'll come out white I um, I think it would be good if you did this with you know a pale green underneath or a yellow or something like that but equally it could be said to be kind of almost like um, it'll look a bit snowy when it comes off because of all the little white splatters that we'll get those beautiful colours together. Now if you do want a discount off of Jackman's paints you can just pop down into the description, scroll to the bottom of the video description and you can use my code there. Just pop it in at the checkout and you'll get 10% discount and they do post these paints anywhere in the world. So again we're going to let this dry and then we'll take it off. So a really good result with this one and the shimmer on this um, on this pearlescent bronze actually it's, uh, it's one of the most shimmery ones that I've seen of all the Jackman's ones and even some of the, uh, the Daniel Smith ones. I've got absolutely beautiful colours there. 
and a really good result too. For masking fluid trick number three, we're going to be making some dots of different sizes. I'm going to be using cotton buds and also some ball headed dressmaking pins. So if you're looking to make dots of circles in the masking fluid, you want something a bit more solid, a bit more circular than you may be able to do with um, a silicon tool or with a ruling pen, then I have a couple of options for you. So we've got the larger option here. And of course there are other things you could use too, but this is working quite well. And you have got your cotton bud. If you're buying these for art, do make sure you get the ones with the, uh, with the paper stems. They're available in most supermarkets now. You don't want the, uh, the plastic ones, they're very bad for the environment. So I've got that size dots. If I want smaller ones, I've actually got a dressmaking pin here. The type with the, uh, with the ball head. Of course, you've got to be a little bit careful here. You don't want to jab yourself in the fingers with it, which I've already managed. So I'm just dipping in there and I can get some larger dots this way. And they're a lot more regular than the dots that I would manage to get if I were trying to use something like a ruling pen. So we'll mix big ones and small ones in there. You can see they'd be useful for all sorts of things, backgrounds and flower paintings, maybe even things like animals and seashells. Okay, and now we let it dry. So now we've got our dots and let's go for some uh, quinacridone magenta. I do love, if you've seen my other videos, you know that I do love a sort of um, a cool blue based pink. They are incredibly useful for colour mixing. You see they've got this beautiful bright pink here. However, if I wanted to cool it down in places, I could pop a little bit of that green we used previously in. And just let those blend together. They're colour opposites, so you'll see that where they meet, you'll get a beautiful grey. So a lovely result with this one and lovely colours. You can see the staining in the centre there that the blue schminky has caused. I don't even know if that's the way you say schminky. It reminds me a bit of the Peter Sellers film, um, is that your minky? Is that your minky, sir? Okay, so the blue schminky is out and the, uh, the white schminky may well be in. For masking fluid trick number four, we're going to be making circles using various diameters of rubber tubing. So next we're going to make some circles and as with any kind of stamping, if something has a little bit of give in it, like rubber, then it works a lot better than trying to use something that's absolutely solid and rigid. So um, I sent my partner Marvin off into his garage, which uh, contains all known things in the universe, and um, he came out with all of these things and even some quite large ones like this. So we're going to have a go at stamping and getting some circles with these. So let's try this big one first. And I'm just going to literally dip in and lift off. Look at that, brilliant. Now, of course, you won't get a perfect impression with any of these things. But this really is what makes them much more interesting. That one looks like a washer, doesn't it? But I can assure you it wouldn't work as well with a washer. You want something with a bit of, a bit of rubber in it, a bit of give to it. And again, press in, lift off. Now those ones there, you can see that the centre's filled in because I didn't take too much care over it. So what you can do to avoid that is just when you dip in, just have a look at it. And if it looks like that, you want to give it a blow and then you'll get your perfect circles. So let's try it since we've got hundreds of them. Let's just try them all. Who knew that there were so many in the world? Of course, you could cut them in half and get sort of um, a semicircle shape as well which I think would be rather nice. And these could be used for any kind of thing. Um, again, just general backgrounds, or I think wouldn't they be nice for sort of underwater bubbles and things like that. Are there any sizes I haven't tried? Let's look at this one. Oh, there's a tiny, tiny one here. Let's try the tiny one. And again, I'm going to let those dry. So this one reminds me so much of bubbles. I think we'll go for some nice bright green. So I've got this one here. I believe this one is called um, Spring Green. It's already out in my palette. And I'm gonna drop some of that in and then I'm gonna go back to the, uh, the blue shimmer paint and we'll add some of that as well. Just letting those blend together. And I think as well, just putting some clean water on in places so that I get a lightness to this. You'll see the paint tends to pool in certain areas as well. So where you've got these wet into wet effects, it kind of gets trapped 
in places by the masking fluid which is just going to add to the overall interest and uh, and beauty of this effect really pleased with this one it looks so much like bubbles doesn't it and i love the way the pigment has been trapped within the circles so you get certain um, certain colours that just are trapped in the middle there. Fantastic, I think, for underwater creatures and underwater things. For masking fluid trick number five, we're going to be making some straight edges using cardboard and old credit cards. At this point, if you're enjoying this video and getting some value from it, if it's useful to you, could you please just press the like button for me? YouTube rewards audience interaction. So if you can uh, like the video or share or comment on the video, then it helps my little YouTube channel to grow and I'll be very, very grateful. So let's get some straight edges. So I've got an old, well, I'll say it was a credit card, but actually it's a Malta bus card from last time I was in Malta. I was actually supposed to be there again last week on a holiday with my daughter and also scoping out locations for a painting holiday. For many years I've wanted to run a painting holiday in Malta and I had actually been making provisional plans to do that next year. I've run painting holidays before now in the French Alps but I decided Malta would be absolutely perfect but of course with the current pandemic none of us are allowed to move let alone Malta and in fact I was supposed to go I was going to take my daughter there my daughter lives four hours drive away in England so I can't even see her at the moment which is not great but uh, she's safe okay. so you can see there various types of marks I've got look how effective these look for um, something like reeds in fact we could even here we are freestyling on the video now what about if we cut a notch out I think we could get something that looks even more like reeds. Look at those. So unfortunately the camera shut off when I was filming the application of paint on this one. But you can see what I'm doing here is applying this nice yellow ochre. And then I've also gone in around here with some of these natural chrome green. And then I've, uh, the chrome oxide green. And then I've applied a little bit of the fresher green, the spring green in places. And I'm really amazed actually now that I've done this on a bigger piece of paper with, with more of these little marks than when I was just experimenting um, over last weekend. I'm amazed how much they look like grasses. And this is, this is, I think, a really practical technique and one I'm going to be using in my own paintings a lot going forwards. Really happy with this one and I'm sure you'll be seeing this technique in a foreground of my landscapes quite soon. For masking fluid trick number six, we've got potato printing. Bet you haven't done that since you were a kid. It's really effective. Let me show you how it's done. So I've got a potato here and I'm just cutting it. Now, don't be tempted to try like I did um, earlier in the week to try cutting this with a craft scalpel because they really are far too sharp. And um, how I didn't end up at the hospital is anybody's guess. But it wasn't going well for me. It was living a little bit dangerously shall we say so I'm going to cut just a rough flower shape here and then I'm going to have a go at printing so there we are what can we say about this well Gordon Ramsay has nothing to worry about it's the first thing to say and um, I won't be taking up a career as a sculptor anytime soon however it's okay so what we're going to do is going to dry it and um, it can help if you cut your potato and leave it for a little while before and after carving it because what we don't want is a load of water mixed in with the masking fluid because that will um, make it far more inclined to both tear the paper when it comes off and also to stain the paper. So you want your surface to be nice and dry and then you're just going to dip in and print. Now be careful with it obviously if you get too much on there it's not going to print that well so we can dab a little bit off and then as I said we're not looking for perfection here just for some interesting background shapes. And I would often be inclined to do these on top of other colors. And you'll see, depending on you know how many times it's been dipped in, what you'll find is you don't get an even distribution of the masking fluid so that paint will go into some of these little places. I think they look more like pterodactyls than flowers. Never mind, never mind. We love them anyway. They're imperfect, but we love them. So. Again, I'm going to let that dry before I put some paint on it. So I've got yet another green here. This is a lovely sort of mint green shimmer. 
and it's another one of these paints that's got tiny sparkles in. It's quite hard to show you on camera because they don't ever show up as well, um, these shimmer paints in photographs and on film as they do when you look at them in real life and they catch the light. I'm really fond of this colour. This is one that I actually applied on top of my tulips painting at the end, just in small places. So really, really enjoyed that one. And then I'm just doing these paints from memory now because they're in a palette. I think this is lemon yellow. It's, it's looking green because my paintbrush already had green on it. So we're going in with these bright, fresh greens here. And just to neutralise it a little bit in places, let's have a little bit more of the burnt sienna. So earth colours can just be used to give a, another dimension to some of your greens. Are they pterodactyls? Are they flowers? Who can tell? I think I'd better practice a little bit more with the potato carving, but you can see the effect you get. And look how some of them have blocked the paint out more than others. For masking fluid trick number seven, we have bubble wrap. This is gonna give you kind of the opposite effect to the netting. It's really lovely, let's have a go. So next we've got bubble wrap. Now when we did the net, what we ended up with was a, a network of shapes with gaps in between where the paint would sit. What we should get with this is the opposite. So what we should get is a series of dots or bumps. Again, be careful not to put too much on in one go, otherwise it'll just all squidge into one big blob. And then you're just going to place it firmly down and press and lift off. And that's come out pretty well, hasn't it? Again, you'll find that there are gaps that the paint sinks into. So these are fantastic for texture techniques and I can't wait to put paint on this one and see how it looks. So this reminds me somewhat of a stone wall. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna start by going in with the burnt sienna again, just a really watery mix. And what I'm going to do then is apply some more of that blue. So this I think is the phthalo blue. And what blue will do is it always cools down brown. So if you have brown and it's too warm and you put some blue in it, you'll see that it'll push it more towards a neutral shade and it'll start to look more like a gray. A good trick actually, if you've got a very warm brown like, uh, like burnt umber and you want a sepia, a cold brown, is just put some ultramarine in and you'll get that, that darker color. Just go a little bit stronger with this because I want it to really show up when we rub that bubble wrap masking fluid off. So this one's worked really well and you could easily with a small paintbrush go in and put some color on top of these or as I said, you could have put a different color underneath really really lovely effect on the bubble wrap. For masking fluid trick number eight I have some frayed nylon rope. So for this next one I've got some nylon rope that's really quite crunchy and I've been experimenting with placing it in the masking fluid and then pressing it on to the paper. Of course you could do several things with this you could actually use it to apply the masking fluid with in, in your as a, as a brush of types but what I'm going to do is just press down and press and lift. And let's do that again. Be careful to work quickly with these things because if one layer has dried, then you apply the, uh, the, the next layer on top. What will happen is it will actually pull off that first layer of rubber. So only press on multiple times if the first layer hasn't dried. And these are some really interesting effects we've got this with this of course you could do things like um, soft fabric could be used as well but I actually like the uh, the marks we get with this so again a really interesting look and I'm going to let that one dry so let's try this color it's a pearlescent pink shimmer and I suspect it to be very closely related to that quinacridone magenta but it's got the sparkles in and what I'm going to do now is mix it with another sparkly colour. So let's go back to the ocean blue shimmer. Now of course when pink and blue overlap you will get purple. And these colours are so shimmery uh, you probably can't see it on camera but they're really really sparkly together. 
Now, of course, you can get quite a natural effect by using the rope in this way. So you could use this for any kind of background. I also think that it would um, it would look nice kind of as a swirly um, thing for moving water, something like that. But equally, it could be something like foliage or just really, you know, a lot of these techniques I'm showing you can just be used as really interesting background techniques where you just let the viewer kind of decide what they are. One of the most exciting ones here with the uh, with the rope there, and um, look at that, it's full of movement, isn't it? Masking fluid trick number nine is all about applying your masking fluid with the bristles of a very stiff brush. So you can use any stiff bristled brush for this one, you can use a nail brush, or you can use um, something like a washing up brush. Again, be aware that if you leave the masking fluid on there, it will just stick all the bristles together. And I hate environmental waste, so I like to be able to reuse things as often as I can. So the second I finish using it, I will stick this in some water. It won't get all of it off, but it'll get enough off that it won't become one clump of masking fluid. So I'll be able to use it again. So again, I've got my masking fluid dish here. I'm just going to dip in. This is something that I often use when I'm painting beaches actually. So I use it alongside splattering. So if I've already done some splattering, I'll then go in particularly towards the front of the beach and use this almost as a way of getting sort of larger marks and stones and pebbles. So you're just going to press on and depending on the type of brush you use, depends on the marks that you get. But you can see you can get some lovely random marks there that are really good for things like beaches and pathways. So because this one looks like ground and pebbles I'm actually going to use the burnt sienna again and I'm going to use some of the black. Now the black in Jackman's range is really a very natural colour and it seems to me almost not like a black. It's closer really to something more the, along the lines of a sepia. It's a really beautiful colour and not at all um, harsh and unnatural. Apologies if you can hear my neighbours um, laughing. It's extremely hard filming videos during uh, coronavirus time because everybody's at home. My neighbour Stuart used an angle grinder just behind the studio for five hours on Saturday. So no filming done that day. But we struggle on. We've got a lot of bird sound actually. There's a lot of bird sound in the video today which Hopefully you're quite enjoying because I think they sound rather lovely. Sometimes they sit on the studio roof, the pigeons, and just kind of cuckoo. Again, a really lovely colour and really lovely technique there. I'm just going to add a little bit more drama to it for things like pebbles. So you can see why I use this one all the time for beaches and foregrounds. Masking fluid trick number 10 is something that I've bought straight in from my experience of mono printing, and that's to use dried foliage, leaves and flowers. So lastly, my favourite technique, one that I use for printmaking all the time, and I've got here a whole folder full of things that I've pressed, leaves and um, ferns, bits of weed and stuff. You want to be choosing things that have got a little bit of solidity to them. I mean, leaf skeletons, um, plants that are a little bit, um, a little bit strong. You won't manage to do this technique with very, very delicate things like flowers because they'll probably just fall apart as you're applying the mask. And you can see that this one is quite strong here. And these little ferns and things are surprisingly strong as well. So what I'm going to do is find one or two of these and then I'm going to coat them with masking fluid. Now I've tried several ways of applying masking fluid to these things and although a brush works incredibly well you can say goodbye to the brush because they literally are not ever usable again and I hate environmental waste. I've also tried applying with my fingers and my god the mess. You can see I'm already in a mess today so let's not make it worse. So I'm going to try now using a glue spreader because when the liquid rubber is dry it'll pull off of this quite easily so what I'm going to do is get some of the masking fluid I'm actually going to use the the glass on the side here as a working space so I'm still on that glass surface because the glass again will just clean off nicely at the end so I'm just going to come over to one side and just use this spreader to apply the masking fluid you want to be quite quick again it needs to be well coated so that you can just place it on and lift it off but not so soaked that it's going to leave one big blob so I'm going to put down get a piece of tissue and press and immediately lift now you might get some little bits left behind don't worry about those just leave them there they'll come off 
when you rub the uh, the masking fluid off don't try and pick them off because it's not going to work so again I've just dipped in again let's just press that one again see if we can get an impression you will not get perfect impressions from this but they still are incredibly beautiful I'm gonna have a go see if I can use this bigger one it's a little bit flimsy so it may break up a little bit but let's just pop some masking fluid on it and see how it does Working quickly is um, of the essence here because you only have, you know, a few seconds before the masking fluid dries. There we go. I've just managed to break one of those lids. Let's see. The others are all OK, though. Let's place that on and press down and lift. I think we could as well try a, um, a bigger, more solid leaf. I've got a little ivy leaf. I think it's ivy. No, it's not ivy. It's something similar to ivy. And I'm going to place it in the middle there. And because this one's large, I'm just going to use my fingers to press this time, actually. We lift up. And I think as well, just going to add one more little fern in the middle there. And lift off. So it looks a bit of a mess now, but once we apply the paint, it's going to be much prettier. So finally, we've got our pressed leaves here. And you can see there's still some bits of leaf on there, but that's fine. We'll just leave those there because they'll come off at the end. I'm going to go for something really earthy here now. So I'm going to go for the, uh, the cadmium red and Jackman's cadmium red is a lot more earthy than some of the cadmiums I've got. So it really reminds me, it reminds me an awful lot of blood, which I think is fabulous for a horror movie fan like me. So I'm going to pop some of that in and then what we're going to do is put some green in there. And of course, because they're opposite colours, we'll get some real sort of earthy browns where they overlap and, uh, and graze. So making sure that I work the paint right in between all these little gaps here. And then we're gonna let it dry before we rub that masking fluid off. Let's just make sure I've gone around all the edges there. Lovely. Really quite chuffed with this one. I thought um, because they didn't make that good an impression, I thought it wouldn't be clear what they are, but you can really see those little flower patterns and actually the leaf is really great because um, it picked up the masking fluid impressions actually picked up some of the veins too so um, really great look to that I'm going to be using this one in the background of my paintings a lot more often so whilst making this video I did an awful lot of experimentation and a lot of things I tried a lot of um, techniques I brought in from other media simply didn't work for masking fluid so I'd be really interested to hear about the things that you've tried with masking fluid do let me know in the comments below I have another video actually that's all about alternatives to masking fluid and other ways of masking your workout. I think you're going to find it really interesting. You can watch that video right now.